So something a little different today, I never planned to do a video on f-stop uh, or apertures. I, and there's so many of them out there, I, I didn't think it was worth my time to do it. But well, I was talking with some photographer friends a while ago, and the subject of aperture versus depth of field came up. And we all know that the aperture affects your depth of field. The smaller the aperture, meaning the larger the f-stop number, and why that relationship for the small number or the large number is the small opening is the subject of another video maybe. But uh, we all know the smaller the aperture, the sharper the image, until you get to a certain point where diffraction kicks in, we're gonna ignore that today. So we're gonna limit this subject or this video to oh, f1.4, whatever your wide open aperture on your lens is, up to about f16 or f22. So anyway, like I say, we all knew it did, but nobody really understood why aperture affects your depth of field. So we're going to try to explain that today uh, without any math or physics or getting too complicated. But we do have some pretty sophisticated and advanced visual aids for you. So here we go. We're going to start with, we're going to keep it simple. And here's your basic lens. You've probably all seen that in a book somewhere. So we're going to have a subject out here. We're going to have a point source like a candle or, you know, a light, something point source for our subject. And we'll put a film plane in here. And the light from the point source is going to get focused on the film plane. And to show that, this is where we get pretty sophisticated. Um, probably should file a patent on this fancy visual aid of ours. We'll deal with that later. Anyway, the strings represent the light rays coming through the lens and focusing on the film plane. And you get a nice sharp point right there. Now, what happens to a subject that's further away? So let's say you move back here. You've got something back here, your point source is further back. Well, what's going to happen, I'm going to exaggerate this just a little bit so you can see it. But what's going to happen is the point of focus is going to move in front of the film plane. And if you're a large format guy shooting uh, view cameras, you're going you're to understand this because your focal length of the lens, if you have, say, a 210 millimeter lens, that means at infinity, focused at infinity, the distance from the center, optical center of the lens to the film plane will be 210 millimeters. So anything closer is going to go further back. Anything, in this case, we were focused here, we moved further away, that means the, the focus point is going to move in closer uh, to the lens. Now, what happens, so here's our, our new focus plane, or at least the, the point of focus for that subject. What happens on the film is we now have a big blurry dot, big blurry circle. And this is known as the circle of confusion. And I'm not making that up. That's what the optical engineers call it. It's the circle of confusion. So what do we do about that? How do we fix that? Well, if we were to go into the lens with the aperture, let's say aperture mechanism, and make this effectively smaller, meaning we only let light rays in through the center of the lens, you see what happens. If this goes in here, we keep the focus point the same here, but now our circle of confusion has gotten smaller. And if we take this in even further, what's going to happen is eventually that circle of confusion gets small enough that it doesn't really matter and everything looks like it's in focus. Now, the, the downside is obviously we're letting in a lot less light, so the image is going to be a lot dimmer. Uh, but that's the trade-off you have to make. Now, if you were to take this all the way down to a pinhole, where the light rays coming in are practically parallel, you're going to almost have, you'll basically have infinite depth of field. So there's a short, quick definition or explanation on why your aperture affects your depth of field. If you have questions or comments, uh, put them down below, send us an email. 